Well, my uh, original intention was to create a video clip where it enables people to uh, come up with a with a sketch uh, which is governed by a mathematical uh, expression. In Katia, such things are known as uh, formulas, laws, or rules. I've, I found out that uh, uh, these are widely used in uh, generative shape, shape design. So uh, before explaining how it works there through mathematical uh, expressions and using it to do a sketch with mathematical expression, I'm going to do a short tutorial which deals with general sweep uh, uh, process in the generative shape design. Uh, once we have a better idea how that thing works, then we're going to go and do it uh, uh, with a formula, okay, or uh, or a rule. Uh, so here's the situation. It is best explained in the context of sweeping a a, a circle of of, of varying uh, varying uh, radius. Uh, along a certain curve. Now that curve does not have to be a straight line, but I will, uh, to make it simple, uh, I will make that a, a, a linear direction. And uh, we uh, try to explain in that context. Okay, so let me start with a part file. Uh, so uh, start, well actually to start with a part file, new part and we're going to be doing this thing in the generative shape design so uh, let me switch to uh, to that particular workbench so uh, let me see uh, shape and generative shape all right the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, draw a line here. That is going to be the line along which we do the sweep. Okay, so let me create a couple of, couple of points. So let's say we go from uh, uh, to make to make sure that it can be easily be seen uh, on the screen. So let's do a line in the yz plane. So uh, how about the uh, say y of uh, 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 5 and Z of also 5 Let's make Z of uh, 1 Let's see how this thing looks like okay that's good except that I'll make this, this instead of 5 make it make it 2 okay so that's one point then I do another one uh, which is uh, let's say uh, Y of uh, uh, 5 and z of uh, how about making it three? All right. So let's have we have a line from this end to that end, and of course so you can measure the length of it and find out where it is. But that, that's okay. Now, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and uh, get the sweep out. See where is it? I think this is sweep. Yeah, you sweep. All right. So uh, the whole idea is sweeping a certain direction, uh, a general profile that you can create, or a line, or a circle, or a conic. So I will concentrate on a circle. Okay. And there are different ways of doing it. Since my, my, my emphasis is getting to talk about laws or rules, uh, what I'm going to do is a simple situation where we have the center, uh, let's see now, uh, center and radius. There we are. Okay, center and radius. Okay, center curve is obviously this curve. And the radius for now, let's take it radius to be point. Five, the radius of that uh, swept 
circle is 0.5. So it's a constant, basically, a constant uh, uh, radius. So it's going to be a cylinder. And we can look at it, preview, and there we are. Nothing exciting. Okay, very good. Now, if you click on law here, law, it allows you to have a variable radius according to the rule that you're going to discuss. So actually, let me put a put this thing in a different view, front view perhaps. There we are. Okay, good. Now, right now, it says constant. Constant because we specified the radius to be constant. That means along the length of this direction, uh, the radius of the swept circle is a constant value, which I think I specified to be 0.5. You can see that right there. So let's make it linear. When you make it linear, you can have a specified starting value, okay, and an end value. By the way, notice that here it says start value is at this end, and the swept, swept end is on the other side, or the end, yeah, swept end is at the other side. So let's make it from, let's make it from 0.25, going to 1. All right. Now, first of all, this tells you exactly how the law works. In other words, at the start point, the radius is 0.25, right there. And at the end point, it doesn't necessarily mean this is the ratio. It doesn't necessarily mean 1 inch. I don't know what that thing is, but the start is represented with 0. The end is represented by 1. There's a uniform linearly varying radius of a height one. So if you say OK and preview it, it's going to be a cone-like object. You can see that right there. OK, let's put it back in the front view. All right, let's click on the law again. Let's click on the law again. By the way, if you make this thing to be 1 and make this thing to be uh, point, uh, 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 point, 0.25, the whole thing reverses, so it looks like that. And you can see that is specified by this, let's call it law, it's basically built in law, okay, linearly varying. All right, now S type, let, let's put, let's keep it the way it is, that, that's fine. S type means the curve actually looks like this. The start value, whatever it is, say one, and the end value is 0.25. If you look at it, it's going to be a not a, a, a cone-like object. The surface is not flat anymore, or let's put it cylindrical anymore. It looks like that. And obviously, if you swept this, make this thing 0.25, and make this thing 1, the whole thing re reverses in shape. Oops, uh, what did I put there? I must have put a gigantic number. I put an 11 right there. So I meant to be... I meant it to be a 1. Preview. All right. Once again, law. And the thing that I'm interested in is actually advanced. Okay. Now, inverse law is uh, just, uh, it looks like uh, inverse law is, I would say it's 1 over x or something like that. So let's try it. For example, when, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Start value, we make it uh, 0.25. End value, we make it 1. And let's see how it looks like with inverse. Yeah, I think inverse, it's really the same thing as uh, switching switching these two. See, if I, if I uncheck this, then it's going to open up like that. All right. Now, I also want to talk about this other feature that we have here, which says advanced. We, I'm still not going to be talking about mathematical expression. So here's, the, here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to close that. It it's really doesn't matter. We're going to fix this thing later on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, let, let me also put this thing in an in isometric, isometric view. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two curves. For example, in the vertical plane, 
in this vertical plane, and this is just for convenience of using YZ. It can be any any two vertical planes that we're talking about. I'm going to sketch. I'm going to sketch a line, yeah, something like this. It doesn't even have to be horizontal. So, but just for the sake of simplicity, I will make it horizontal. It does not have to be horizontal. Okay. And then in a plane that's perpendicular to this, so let me exit. In a plane that's perpendicular to the to this, uh, for example, x y or uh, or x z. Uh, let me let me choose uh, let me choose. Uh, well, actually, to make it easy to see, I will use. Uh, I'm not really going to use a perpendicular plane. I'm just going to use the y z plane. I'll take back what I said. The same plane where this was sketched in. I think that was sketching the YZ plane. I have another sketch. And my other sketch is any arbitrary curve that I want to draw. For example, draw. For example, let me do this. Uh, let me do it like that. It goes there, stays a constant, and then it becomes, it'll have a curvature. Okay? All right, good. Exit. Now, notice that we have two sketches here, right there. So you go and find and find this uh, uh, icon which says law. You click on it. It says reference direction. This is my reference direction. In other words, when I'm talking about a, a, a law, what I mean is a curve. A curve has an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is going to be called reference direction. And definition is going to be that other sketch over there. So basically, my curve, mathematical curve, if I think if I think this the bottom one is x, this is going to be the height y, and it represents the uh, the the radius of that circle. All right, let's look at the these uh, things that we have in in our uh, dialog box. Uh, notice that x equal to zero. It says here is x equal to zero. Here's the end. So if I change this thing, notice that this is non-dimensional. Uh, non so for example, is x equal to 0.21 of that, or 21% of that entire length, the radius here is going to be 1.06 or 69 inches. And then after a while, the radius stays a constant because my, my, my line was horizontal. And then it's going to become a circle, and the radius is changing not linearly anymore, okay? Now, if I select the X parameter here, this box here, the whole thing reverses. In other words, this becomes the variation of X and the vertical dis become, distance become the radius of, of that swept circle. Well, let me put it back where it was. Now, over here, oh, this scale, by the way, it means that you can make the radius of the circle uh, scale it up or down based on, for example, if I make this thing 2, see right now it says y is 0.721. If I make it 2, it becomes double of that. And as you go further down, uh, the value here, whatever it was, is going to be double of that. So this is just the scale. I'm going to make it 1. True scale, whatever I have. Of course, you could have dimensioned these circles, uh, the, these, these sketches, so that it had the scale that you want. Now, heterogeneous is something that is rarely used by, at least by me, and this says that you can change the axis, the unit of the axis, which right now is none, it's a ratio, and you can uh, you can also change the output to something else. Instead of inches, you can get some other entity, uh, which is not really useful for me. Now, we say, okay, so here is the law that we created. You can always go back and change it. Uh, change it means I don't want it to genius, by the way. Okay, let's make sure it is correct. Yep, good, good. So this swept, I don't want it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, delete this because I'm not sure if you can actually go ahead and change it at this point. But I'm going to delete that and uh, sweep it again. Swept or sweep the reference. This is a circle, radius and uh, center and radius. The reference direction is here. I don't want a constant radius. 
I want to go to the law and I say advance. See that? Advance. Check this. And then you go and pick it from the uh, from the tree. So this is the curve that I input it. And I close that. And I say preview. And notice what happens now is that at every point, the radius is coming from the curve that I specified. In other words, the vertical height, the vertical height uh, along this uh, uh, this curve. From uh, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Okay. All right. Uh, now, by the way, these uh, re re uh, relimiters re re means that. You cut it off between two uh, vertical planes. Right now, these are the relimitation. Re but if you create two planes here, it's going to cut it off between those two planes. Now, what I want to do is I want to go and specify how these curves are, are, are created based on the mathematical rule. And that's going to mathematical expression. And that's going to come out of uh, the next uh, video clip. Okay, I hope you got the idea how this thing works. The similar ideas apply to line and general profile and a conic, uh, the, the process. Of, now, of course, this was the easiest way of doing it. There are other ways of creating uh, creating these, uh, uh, these surfaces. So basically what I've described to you is how to do a axis symmetric surface uh, based on these laws. Uh, or the, the, the icons that you see there, okay? So I'm going to stop it, and we see how uh, this thing works.